Okay, so um, today I'm going to talk about something that I probably shouldn't be talking about, but whatever, I'm going to tell you guys about it anyway. As you can see, Funny Jump wants me to film this for you guys, so Funny Jump is for you. The brony phenomenon. So, what is a brony? Uh, bronies are people, and part of a rising worldwide internet subculture. There are millions of them, they're really big on the internet, and start in late 2010. The average brony, like the best majority of them, are male, 15 to 30 year olds in high school or college. But what makes them really controversial and at times discriminated is that they're really devout fans of this one particular television show. That being My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. <laughs> no, but hey, go back. Hey, I'm not kidding. There is a huge male dominated fan base for this show. Literally millions of men that watch this show made from little girls. They call themselves bronies. Bros that like ponies. Bronies. I mean, it sounds a little bit. It sounds a little bit creepy, doesn't it? I mean, millions of guys watching a show for little girls. I mean, uh, are they gay? Are they pedophiles? Do they live in their mother's basements? <laughs> no, they're just you know normal guys living normal lives that just so happen to like a show made for little girls. Follow the bros. <laughs> so the question is why. And that's exactly what we're going to find out. But look what happens when we compare some of the best movies from the last 100 years to Malibu. Who's your boss? 8.2 from IMDb. Titanic, 7.5. Toy Story 3, 8.6. Star Wars, 8.8. .8. King's Speech, 8.3. Ben Hur, 8.2. Lord of the Rings, 8.8. .8. Inception, 8.8. .8. Forrest Gump, 8.7. Gone with the Wind, 8.2. Avatar, 8.1. Lion King, 8.3. My Little Pony Friendship is Magic 8.9. <laughs> Outshining all, all these movies. <laughs> I mean, this right here, I mean, this is a lot. I mean, if this show is really that good enough to you know, outperform all of these other wow. kind of shows, I mean, it pretty much justifies more or less the fact that it has a total clip falling in the And you know, I have seen the show, and honestly, it's awesome. It's really, really awesome. And honestly, it deserves much more than 8.9. Next. So the question is, what is My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, and why are, and why are all these men like this? It is the fourth generation of My Little Pony, and it's a honest opinion. It's much better made than the last, uh, previous series, because honestly, the last three suck, apparently. Uh, it's owned by Lauren Faust, uh, and uh, she and her team, like, they worked on many shows in the past, you know, the people that work on this show, they're the best of the best. Like, you know, they have uh, the best storyboard artists, the best uh, animators, the best directors, everything, everything. Like, you know, these people, they, they know what they're doing. Go back. Uh, also, the show is moral based. Uh, every episode has its own little uh, lesson that can be applied to everyday life. Uh, it's also meant to be family friendly. Now, how many of you have uh, younger brothers? Or cousins. Me, Gilbert. Me, 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 pick me. And uh, how many of you are forced <clears throat> to watch, you know, whatever crap they're watching on television? Yeah, and it's annoying, right? No. So, so uh, Lauren Faust and her team was made aware of this problem, and you know, they want to make a show that would be, you know, universally appealing to everybody. You know, so let's say you'd be babysitting your little cousin, and she'd be watching the show. You know, you're gonna have a good time watching. it. And also, uh, the show has adult humor and games. No kids, the ponies don't make sex jokes. <laughs> but I mean, uh, they, they do it in such a way, uh, it's only like Toy Story, we have to be older in order to uh, appreciate uh, all the jokes. And some of the themes of the show, um, like, the show alludes to, but it doesn't promote things such as um, racism, sadism, agnosticism, even alcoholism. And they do it in such a way so that you know, little girls can get a feeling of what it is without actually knowing about it. It's a little bit more guessing. And this is more of a personal opinion. Uh, the show gives me a feeling of inner peace and satisfaction. You know, whenever I feel sad or depressed, I just watch an episode of the Ponies. You know. <clears throat> but probably the, the most incredible aspect of what makes the show famous is its wonderful cast of characters. The main six. I did not misspell that. And, uh, like, in your average girls cartoon, you know, all the characters, they're living mysteriously happy lives. Uh, all they worry about is makeup and boys, but no, no, no. The characters of My Little Pony, they're much better than that, you know. They're much more rounded, they're much more elaborate. You see the positive and negative aspects to them. Um, they're very round, very relatable. 
Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna just. Okay. You have a question. What does MLP stand for? My little pony. Oh, in my hometown, they use it to. Me <laughs> <laughs> too, bro. Me too. Okay, you don't need to tell. Okay, so this is Twilight Sparkle, and she's the main protagonist of the series, and she's the best student of Princess Celestia, which is her goddess, so to speak. Uh, she starts off the series by being socially awkward, but you know, she gets the hang of things, and she becomes a friendly pony all around. She's very studious, very smart, very scholarly, but you know she tends to be a bit of a perfectionist, so she gets really anxious sometimes. But other than that, she's a humble but effective leader. This is Applejack, and she's very honest, very true. And she, she was a family of hardworking conservative apple farmers. Louis. And she's very athletic, very competitive. <clears throat> but she's very, she's very kind, but you know, sometimes she's really stubborn, hard headed. She wants things to be done her way. This is a And she works at Jerky Corner, the cake shop. She's very silly, very random. Never, I don't know what she's looking at. And she's very outgoing and extroverted, but you know, she's a, bit, a little bit insecure sometimes. And you know, she's very famous for her songs, for her laughter, and her parties. And she just defied the laws of physics many, many, many times throughout the show at Moscow. This is Rarity. And she works with the fashion industry at Carousel Brzee. She's a fashion designer and a seamstress. Now, um, about most, most girls' cartoons, you know, if you actually see the pony, I mean, uh, if you actually see the characters in most girls' cartoons, you know, all fine dresses. Well, Rarity here, she actually makes a business out of selling dresses. She's very creative, but she's very spoiled, very dramatic, you know. She makes a big deal about things when she doesn't go right. But she's very generous, and um, she's what you'd call the 1% of Ponyville. This is Rainbow Dash. Oh, yeah. Rainbow Dash. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, her job, because she's a Pegasus, she maintains and controls the weather in Ponyville. She moves about to She's very loyal to her friends. She's very confident, but you know, a little bit too confident because it actually really like And when it comes to flight, she's really aerodynamically talented, but because of that, you know, she likes to show it off. But she's pretty cool, so she deserves to do She's at least 20% cooler than the other colors. Yes. And my personal favorite, Fluttershy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, she's very gentle, very quiet, and very sweet. And as you can find some of her name, she's really shy and really fierce. But what makes her awesome is that every now and then throughout the show, she is courageous, defensive, and unpredictable. Like, you don't expect, you don't expect much from her, and then bam, she is KOing a bear. Hey, hey. Don't tell him. Wait, hey Joe, can you press escape real quick? Escape. Uh, there's a video down there. Lower right. Lower right on the steps. Hey, so I'm going to show you a 30 second scene. Like, you know, because the characters are so different and so unique, you know, it's really nice to see them interact. So right now I'm going to show you a 30 second scene with a uh, Rainbow Dash, the cocky one, with a uh, Fluttershy, the quiet one. Oh, wait, are the speakers on? Put it back on! Side note, um, other than Fluttershy's mane, how many times do you see the color pink? Ten. <laughs> exactly. And that's another reason why men like Fluttershy so much. Like, they use the pink in such oh, limited one. value, so the colors are very unisexual. So now we know what and who makes the show so famous, now we have to know how all this started. So when the show first came out, the reviews suddenly came pouring right in. And, and you know, uh, most of the critics they gave the show uh, positive thumbs up. They they appraised the animation, how it was directed, everything. They couldn't find anything wrong with it, except for one in particular. 
Hey, go back. Go back. So, um, this self-proclaimed feminist critic called Kathleen Richard, she really bagged on the show. She was saying, you know, things that didn't really make sense. She was saying how, um, how the show was a terrible role model for kids because it was implying that Rainbow Dash was a lesbian. And, and she also didn't like how there weren't any black ponies in the show, how the show wasn't really racially diverse. And then she noticed that there were indeed black ponies. See these two black ponies, the Princess Celestia? Yeah. So, and she said, and I quote, It seems that the only black ponies in the te television show My Little Ponies are slave ponies to the white pony overlord. <laughs> Any of his bag There's an English pony. Uh, but other than that, you know, she just kept on bagging on it. And when that happened, a uh, review was posted on 4chan immediately after it came out. And you know, the, they, the people from 4chan, they just they're saying how it was especially ignorant and stupid about it. And um, Oh yeah, and when, uh, so people were actually curious as to see what was so bad about the show, but you know, they, they started seeing the show and they actually liked it, a lot. So they posted threads, pictures, topics, everything about it, making it exponentially popular on board. And from there they spread outwards to other content sharing websites such as Funny Junk, Reddit, Cheeseburger, Tumblr, you name it. Fortune's got a whole board. Yeah. They an entire pony board. <coughs> And from there, they made all these memes and fan art such as I don't always watch shows for the girls, but when I do, I prefer My Little Pony. Yeah. It's like, I love My Little Pony! Sixteen and a half. I simply watched My Little Pony for a few minutes. Gee, who could that be? George Bush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And my personal favorite. <laughs> so, in conclusion, the Brony phenomenon was something that nobody ever saw coming, yet Bronies exist as men all over the world, all mutually appreciative of a wonderful show that's well written, well animated, well directed, well made, that just so happens to be made for little girls. But, you know, there's a lesson to be learned from all this. This is the best instance of the phrase, never judge a book by its cover. I mean, you see this for the first time, you think, you know, it's lame, it's gay, and it's suckish. But believe me, I've seen practically every episode of the series. It is not lame, it is not gay, and it is most definitely not suckish. I highly encourage all you guys to see it, especially the men in this classroom, because it takes a true man to see the show. <laughs> but other than that, you know, I'm, I'm really happy that, you know, the casting crew, they're getting, you know, all the fame that they deserve because this is really a truly wonderful show. Like, honestly... Okay, what chat? I'm going to watch it. Yes, sir. Ah, great question. What chat? Um, it is shown on a channel called... Okay, uh, it is shown on a channel called The Hub. Uh, like, if you have time more cable, it's channel 121. Or if you don't have The Hub, you can always see it on YouTube, um, and on Netflix, apparently. And that is it. Any questions? Talk about Derby. Derpy? Derpy moves? Come on, man. Why did you choose to do that? Don't kill you, bro. Why not? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're a brony? I'm a brony. You proud of it? I'm proud of it. I know. Do girls want to get back? Yeah, it goes like this. Do you have the action figure? Yeah, I have a little flutter sign on my desk. Do you have a what? A flutter sign on my desk. Any other questions? Who's your favorite pony? Fluttershy. Thank you guys for seeing this presentation. You know, it was really fun doing this. Thank you guys for paying attention. My name is Gordon Hernandez, and I'm a brony. Take care, funny joke. <laughs>